Hello everyone and welcome to Paper Crafting Playdate. My name is Robin Armbrecht and this is Really Robin Stamps and I am so thankful that you are joining me today. Now today's Paper Crafting Playdate is not live because we are traveling so I pre-recorded this um, so you would still have a video to watch this week and I've got something very very fun to do today. It's called a pinwheel tower card and it's kind of extra. It's something you would send to a very special person, but it looks complicated, but it actually isn't too difficult. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to create a pinwheel tower card and this um, card fold, I guess you would call it, is kind of new to me. I can say that I've never made one before and it's kind of trending right now at least in my Stampin' Up! world and it's really really cool so let me show you what it looks like so this is the card and I'm going to show you the top view here because that's why it's called the pinwheel tower so this center part this little column is the tower and then obviously these are the pinwheels so when um the recipient of the card gets it, they can kind of flip through the card and you've got four, basically four sides of a card to decorate. So it's really pretty fun and it fits in a regular size envelope. So this is what we're going to make today. And I thought it would be fun to bring in this paper. This paper is called Bloom Where You Are Planted and it's one of the nine papers that is on sale during the month of July, 2021. So you can get this pack of paper, which is regularly $11.50 for $9.78, along with some other great papers. So this is a 15% off sale that you don't wanna miss. You can just buy one package, you can buy two packages, it doesn't matter, there's no limits to it. So let's take a look at this fun paper. So we have got sides of the paper that have great images to cut out as well as use. Here's a wood grain. Here's the pots. I really love when Designer Series paper has kind of a busier, bolder side and then kind of a more subtle side. Look at this great brick. And then we've got some more plant toppers to go with those plant vases. There's another great wood grain. And we've got a leaf and a beautiful terracotta brick color. And then we've got these fun hanging vines with kind of a stone granite look. So beautiful, beautiful paper. All right. So here are the supplies that you're going to need to make the pinwheel tower card. You're going to need one piece of basic white that's five and three fourths by four and a fourth. And then you're going to need three pieces that are two and three fourths by four and a fourth. So I'll put three on there. All right, so let me bring those in. there's those pieces. Then if you're going to cover your pinwheel tower with designer series paper, then you're going to need four pieces that are the same size as the pinwheels, which is two and three fourths by four and a fourth. This one. And then you're going to need three or four, depending on whether you want a blank spot in your card, three or four pieces that are two inches by four and a fourth. Okay, so I've picked all kinds of patterns that are gonna go together here. So let me show you how to create the tower to start this card. I've already scored this one, but I'm gonna walk you through it anyway. So this is again, five and three fourths by four and a fourth and you're going to start from one end and you're going to score every three-fourths of an inch. So you're gonna go three-fourths, then you're gonna go one and a half, two and a fourth, and three. 
and that's going to give you one, two, three, four score lines. And then what you're gonna do is take your bone folder, if I can find mine. And you're gonna score these all in the same direction. So I'm gonna go this way. And just starting at one end, I'm gonna score them all going the same way. These score lines are gonna create that column that's in the middle of the pinwheel or what is considered the tower. Okay, so once you've got all of those going in the same direction, you can see how they just automatically kind of go together. This one on the end is what you're gonna to adhere to this piece here to get that first pinwheel and the column. Okay, so this piece makes the column and one pinwheel. That's why you only have to cut three more pinwheels. All right, so let's glue this. You can use any adhesive that you'd like to do this. So I'm gonna put adhesive along the edges of this section here. And then I'm just going to fold that over give it a little score like that okay and then I'm gonna pop it up and I'm gonna fold it the other way and this is just gonna give my score lines a lot of flexibility and make them really malleable so that when I'm turning this little pinwheel card it's gonna work with me all right so that is the first step very easy so the next thing that you do is you just have to put the rest of the pinwheels on. And so the best way to do this, um, for me at least, because I, I tend to like, I don't know, spatially this was very confusing at first. As long as I look at where this first um, pinwheel is going, I know I need to tuck the second one in perpendicular to the first one. Okay, so that's gonna go there. And then the next one's gonna go perpendicular to that one and then that one's gonna go perpendicular to that one. Okay, so we're just gonna do them one at a time. So we'll put adhesive here. I kinda of like to stand this up, and then I make sure that I'm getting my paper even with the paper next to it. So once you kinda of have it stuck down, you can like get it straight, and make sure that these um, sides here are lining up. Okay, so now we've got, that was our first one, here's the second one, and now the third one goes like that. So let's put adhesive on this one. Once you make one, it makes a lot more sense. Okay, I'm gonna stand this up just to get those ends even with the column. I do enjoy the um, liquid glue so that I have a little room to wiggle my piece to make sure I've got it straight. Okay, so now we've got those three on and then the last one goes perpendicular again to that piece. So we'll open that up, put on the adhesive. Now, if you start making these cards and you, you look around for other ideas on Pinterest or YouTube, you're gonna see some different variations of this card, um, which is really cool. You can make them in different sizes. You can make them um, like in a big five, five by seven size. You can do a longer like four by six size. You can even do a smaller little note card size. So there's a lot of flexibility. Um, to this pattern. So I am showing you just one basic way. And for me, it was the simplest way um, to kind of show how you create the pinwheel. There's a great um, pattern out there that uses um, designer series paper 
on the inside and you create the column as a single entity and then you put four sides on it. That's another option. Um, and the reason that that's kind of cool is because the designer series paper is obviously thinner and um, your card is slightly less bulky. So I think with using basic white as kind of the base of the pinwheel tower that it doesn't get too bulky to mail. I think if you were gonna create the sides out of cardstock, you might wanna consider making the column out of designer series paper. That way you can kind of cut down on how much cardstock's right in the middle. All right, so now that you're looking at this, you can start in any direction, right? It, it really looks the same. I tend to hold it this way so that I have a two inch piece over here and then my um, first one is in the middle. Now this one has just a little bit sticking out here so I didn't get it quite perfectly straight but that's okay, I'm just gonna trim it like that. Okay, so let's put our designer series paper on. So I'm going to just, again, use the multi-purpose glue and I'm gonna attach these pieces. So this is gonna be the front. And so for me, it just is easier to kind of orient myself if I start with what I want the front to look like. Let's bring in all these gorgeous papers here. And we'll put this one here. So when I picked the pattern papers, I just picked pieces that coordinated together. All right, so that those two are on the front. Now you wanna keep in mind that whatever you're gonna put on the next um, flip, this main piece is gonna show. So you wanna definitely pick something that you like that coordinates with the front. Generally, if you're using um, all designer series papers from the same pack, they're gonna mostly coordinate. So you'll be in good shape. So I'm gonna put this cute little brick on the next side with some leaves. This paper is really fun. Okay, so that's gonna be my second side. And now I'm gonna flip this and I'm gonna choose this one to go next because I see I like how that coordinates. So I'm gonna put that one there. And then we'll put this nice dark piece here. So this is the third side. Okay, and now we've got the last side. See, we're coming back up to the front. So I'm gonna use this beautiful brick piece. So I kind of picture this last side as being the back of the card or like what you would consider to be the inside of the card. And so I am opting to only use three two inch by four and a quarter pieces so that I can keep this one blank and this will be the spot where I'm gonna write my message um, to the person that I'm sending it to. Okay, so let's just review. So I did this one. This is gonna be the front of the card, so when I put it in the envelope, it'll be like this. And then we've got side two, side three, and then the back or side four. All right, so a couple of my designer series papers here are just a little uneven, or they're just cut just slightly differently than my um, card stock. So I'm gonna just trim off a little bit that's peeking out there. It's not a huge deal, but I kind of like it to look pretty. Okay, so let's decorate this card. Now let me show you, um, here's the stamp set that goes along with this paper called Plentiful Plants. And there's all these amazing dies that go with these images. This is a really, really fun stamp set. And I've never had anything like this. This is a really 
um, it's new, it's nice. So these images um, can be cut out. And so I've cut out one of these to use on our card. And then these pots, um, some of these have dies to cut them out. So like this little cute um, kind of tealish pot and then this evergreen pot and then this nice little terracotta part, pot. Those all work with these dies. So not only can you stamp those images and um, cut them out, you can also just cut them out right straight from the designer series paper, which is quite brilliant. So that's what I've done. I'm just keeping this super easy. I'm not even gonna really use the stamps today. So there are the three pots that I've cut out. Okay. And then on this piece of paper, you can cut out some of the greenery. So I went ahead and used the dies. So this die and this die and the little snake plant. Those all can get cut out of this one. And of course, all the rest of them you can cut out by hand. So that's, that's pretty cool. So I cut those out as well. So we're going to use these on our card. So one of the things that's really kind of fun about this rotating spin interactive fun fold kind of card is that you can kind of build your um, sentiment to the person that you're, you know, because you've got a lot of space to create little scenes or to make, um, you know, the spaces for, you know, giving your message basically. So I kind of thought that this stamp set was really fun. Um, it's a nice little thank you greetings on here. So I'm gonna try to use as many of these as possible. So on the front, I'm gonna use this to a dear friend. And I'm just gonna put it on a piece of, of white paper going across that hanging greenery. So this will be the beginning of my message, like that. Now, you could um, use dimensionals um, to pop up some things as you're decorating this, but you don't wanna get it too bulky because it's already pretty bulky. So I'm just gluing everything flat. Now I'm gonna put a little plant right here so I'm going to bring in this little pot because it kind of coordinates with the greens on those hanging plants. And then we'll bring in the little snake plant. Isn't this also called like um, mother-in-law's tongue or something like that? So cute. It's supposed to be really good for your house to have those, right? All right, so there's our front. So let's do the next one and we'll build a pot with this nice little round one and this fun little greenery here. And I'm just gonna tuck that right behind before I press it all the way down. Now, when you start to glue on your little scenes, you wanna keep in mind that this portion of that side of that pinwheel is gonna show. So I'm kind of being careful. It's not a bad, it's not horrible if your next scene shows. Sometimes that's kind of fun. Um, but in this case, I'm just kind of keeping each side a surprise. And so I made sure to glue that there. So on this side, so it's to a dear friend, and then I'm going to use the greeting that says, you touched my heart. And I'm just gonna stamp that right on the designer series paper. Okay, so now let's go to the next one and we'll glue our next plant on there. Now this one's bigger, so it's probably gonna show a little bit and that's okay. We'll put that kind of in the middle. 
I'm loving just you cutting out this these images on this paper. All right, so it says, to a dear friend, you touched my heart. And then there is a so very much greeting. We'll just, that looks crooked. So very much. And now we get to the end of the card and I'm gonna put this beautiful big plant over here. Right along there. Isn't that cute? I love this. All right, so now I want to, I wanna put the big thank you over here. But I don't really put wanna put it up here. I kinda of wanna put it in this corner a little bit. So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna, use my ink pad and I'm just gonna stamp one word at a time. So because this is a photopolymer, it makes it really easy. I can just see through my stamp and just ink the thank. And I'll put that right there. And then I'm gonna clean off my stamp with my Stampin' Scrub. And now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to just ink the word you and then I'm gonna put that down here like that. So I've got a thank you right there. Now this is basically a spot for my, um, where I can personalize the card, but there's another great greeting in here that kind of goes along with the thank you. It says a little note with the biggest thanks. So I'm gonna stamp that there like that. And I see my little A didn't quite stamp because, you know, it's a little bulky, but that's okay. I'm just going to take my basic black marker and fill that in, and then we're good to go. All right, what do you think about that? So here's our message to a dear friend. You touched my heart so very much. Thank you. So that's a beautiful little thank you note for somebody. Okay, so I would like to show you another version of this idea. And I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. All right, we'll set you over here. So this is a bundle that's going to be in the next mini catalog, which starts August 3rd. It's the July to December mini catalog, and it's got our holiday stuff, fall and Christmas and all kinds of fun things. And so this bundle is in that catalog, um, the Penguin Place um, stamp set and then the Penguin Builder Punch. So I thought it would be really fun because there's so many pieces um, to build a really fun pinwheel tower card. So I already have the base of the card made. So let's find all of my images here. We're gonna use all kinds of images. <laughs> so we've got our penguins. get them all out here and then I'll push them off to the side. Okay. All right, so when I cut the paper for this one, I wanted to create a little scene on the front of this card. Um, so I cut another piece that was just a little bit smaller than my card front so that I could do a little stamping on that. So my front piece on this card is going to be out of Whisper White, and then the rest is going to be designer series paper. So I'm going to go ahead and glue those pieces on. And I cut these just slightly differently. I trimmed them so that they would be four inches by one and three fourths for the smaller sides. So it gives a nice little, you can still see the white border of the card. And then for these bigger pieces, I 
trimmed them at two and a half by four. So that is another way that you can cut those papers. So let's quickly put these on and then we'll decorate this card with our cute little penguins. Okay, I bet you're wondering about this paper here. This paper is going to be a free item in the upcoming celebration sale that's going to also start August 1st. So it's kind of cool how they've put this bundle together. So if you purchase that bundle, um, you are getting really close to earning a free item. And one of the free items that you can earn is this pack of paper that coordinates with the penguins. So that's pretty fun. And I'm using all of the, um, the pattern sides of these papers. The opposite sides of these papers are all um, really fun. They're all little critters, right? They're foxes and snowmen and polar bears and penguins. And so you can totally cut out all of these images and um, use them on your card making as well. Okay, again, I'm gonna leave that little back part blank um, so that I can write on it. So there's what our card looks like. So let's decorate the front. And so I'm going to bring in some misty moonlight. And I'm gonna bring in this little um, hill or snow, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna create a little hill on my card. And then we're going to stamp the penguin who is sliding. We're gonna make him go on that hill. So with the memento, I'm gonna stamp him right there like that. I'm just gonna leave that open. All right, and then he needs uh, a beak. So there's two beaks in this stamp set. One is for the penguin who is got a profile here, and then the other one we'll use when we stamp the penguin who's facing us. And then we're going to stamp the little tree that comes right there. Now I would like to make this look a little bit better. And so I would like the snow to be white, but I would like the sky to be blue. So what I did was create a little masking paper and I just took the um, I took the little hill and I stamped it on my masking paper and then I cut around it. So then what I'm able to do is line that up with my snow line. So now I'm gonna kind of use a blending brush and I'm gonna create a, a sky and it won't get on this snow part. So I don't want the penguin to get um, I don't want him to get blue like my sky either. So I'm going to mask him as well. And so this is just a well-loved post-it note here, but I did the same thing. I just stamped him on the post-it note and then cut around him. So now I'm going to take a blending brush with the misty moonlight. And I'm just going to create a really light kind of sky background. And I can go right on top of my masking papers they're going to protect what I don't want to be blue. Okay, so we're just going to make that kind of light. And then when I take that off, those are nice and bright. And once you create these, you just use them until they don't stick anymore. And I just keep them inside my little box with my stamp so I know exactly where they're at. All right, the last thing we're going to add is some snow. So there's cute little snowflakes. And we're gonna just create a little snow 
stamp that around like that. So the greeting for this card is going to go, or the front, the initial greeting is going to go right on the front. Whoops, I got that one. Uh, got a little blue on there. I think I got some inky fingers. So what I want the first one to say, I love this greeting. It says, to the coolest friend ever. So you might look at this and think, oh, this is a Christmas or, you know, winter stamp set. And yes, penguins are winter, but there's a lot of images in here that you can just use any time of the year for people who just love penguins. So let me stamp that fits perfectly on one of these stitched rectangles to the coolest friend ever. Now, since I kind of made that smudge there, I'm going to just go ahead and make a little make it a little bit blue and then I'm going to put a little snowflake right there like that and then we'll put one over here to balance it and now it looks like I meant to do it right you can always fix your mistakes so let's glue this on right across there. All right, so this is the front of the card to the coolest friend ever. I bet you're thinking of somebody you know, maybe who likes penguins or somebody who would think this is a really fun interactive card. Okay, so that's the front. I'm going to just repeat these trees over here because we can. Let me get the green back out. And we'll just stamp a couple, a couple times and just kind of make it look like there's another little hill over there. All right, so the second page, we're going to bring in a, another penguin. And we'll use the one that is facing forward. So when you use the punch, the penguin image is upside down. So that's why I'm going to stamp him upside down. And then when you punch him, let me just trim this out here. He just punches out perfectly. So this punch is really versatile because it's got the little um, penguin feet and it also has this inside. So let's say you didn't want to stamp the penguin. Maybe you just wanted to get this punch and you wanted to make penguins. So you could punch this piece out of black and then you could punch this inside where his you know, um, bodice is. You could stamp or punch that in white and then you can punch his feet in a color as well. So it's really, quite versatile. So we're going to put put him here. So some of the other greetings in the stamp set are just so cute. So one of them is I like you a lot. So we're going to put that on this page. Because remember, this is to the coolest friend ever. I like you a lot. And I kind of put it over there so that it wouldn't wouldn't show. We'll do that. So now I've already punched out a bunch of feet from um, out of Mango Melody, and I just stuck them right on my glue dots. So if you want to make him standing, you stick the feet under like that. And then on the next page, we're going to make him sitting. So I'll show you how that works. I probably should have put the feet down first. That's okay. Just tuck that under there. All right, now he needs a nose. So let's give him the straight nose. Like that. This is so much fun. This is just the greatest stamp set. It really is so many fun little pieces. There's this tiny little heart here. So I'm gonna just 
stamp that in blue. I'll just stamp it three times there. So we've got a like you a lot. And just because we can, let's just do, we'll do another little tree over here. So that'll kind of peek from the other side, right? So we'll see the trees. And then we've got this cute little penguin. So after I like you a lot, the next little message says, um, it's like a little, except a lot. So we're gonna put that on the next one. And we're going to make the penguin sitting, okay? So if you want him to sit, then you just turn his feet up like that. And then he's sitting. On this one, we're gonna put a balloon because this is gonna be like a birthday card. So I'm gonna use the misty moonlight and stamp a balloon. Now that's gonna show, but that's okay. I want that to be able to show. And then let's see, where is my little, here it is. And we've got the balloon string. So let's put that right there. And we'll kind of situate him, make it look like he's holding the balloon. So my words, again, are in this long greeting. They're in all one big strip, and it says it's like it's like a little except a lot, and I want it to be right here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna ink up, it's like a little. And then I'll clean my stamp, and I'll ink up except a lot, and put that right underneath. All right, so he's got the little balloon. It's like a little, except a lot. And then we've got our last page here. So this is a birthday card, so we're gonna put happy birthday. <laughs> there we go. And we want one more little penguin on here, of course, because he we need to have a little penguin on each side. So he's gonna be sitting. And we've got this other really fun greeting that says, be cool, be chill, be merry. So that's like a fun little Christmas greeting, right? Well, I don't want it to say be merry. I just wanted to say be cool and be chill. So I'm going to just ink up the part that says be cool, be chill. Like that. And then we'll put that right there. All right, what else? Okay, I, I cut out a couple of the images, um, other images. There's this cute little present. So I just stamped this on some basic white and I'm gonna cut it out. And we'll put it over here by the happy birthday and where you can write your message. And then um, this is like a little, little gift bag. So let's just put that over here like that. All right, what do you think? What do you think? Pretty fun, right? Let's close this back up. All right, so let's look at our work here. So to the coolest friend ever, I like you a lot. -o. It's like a little, except a lot. Happy birthday, be cool, be chill. Now, I didn't even use these pieces, but you can put the little um, winter hat and scarf on him. Um, so that's really fun. It, there's also a little star, there's a little bow, so you could make a little bow um, either at the neckline or on the head. There's little reindeer antlers. So it's a really fun, fun stamp set. All right, look at these fun, fun cards. I hope that you're gonna give this a try. Um, it's not as difficult as it looks. I hope I didn't make it look difficult. Here's one more. I made this with the pattern party paper. 
And then I brought in um, the Quiet Meadow stamp set with these gorgeous, gorgeous dies. So I cut out the flowers in black, and then I just use these images to kind of do a little bit of background stamping. And so we've got Thinking of You, Heartfelt Love and Caring Thoughts Are With You, No Matter What, I'm Here For You, Feel Better Friend. So this one's kind of like a thinking of you, somebody's going through something kind of card but then when you know after they read it they can display it like that so that's kind of one of the really great features of the pinwheel tower card i would love it if you would leave me a comment and let me know which which one is your favorite if you can pick a favorite and um if you're gonna give this a try and try this pattern um i would be so thrilled there's going to be a blog post, or there is a blog post that coordinates with this um, video so that you could download this PDF and you will have um, the pictures and the directions and the dimensions to create this um, yourself. And so I really hope that you give it a try. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.